Hi there, Pisces. Welcome to your weekly reading. So this is going to run roughly from November 5th until November 11th. The first card that I have for you here is the Page of Coins. This is the Page of Pentacles. This usually denotes projects uh, coming into the picture. Things that have been um, slowed down are now being um, talked about, are now finally you know, gaining traction and gaining momentum. So whatever that has been kind of delayed and stalled for you guys for last week, I feel like there is an energy for green light, full speed ahead, things moving forward, and um, a lot of things kind of being thrown at you this week. A lot of responsibilities to take care of, a lot of errands to run, a lot of movement happening. So I see you darting back and forth, um, possibly needing to be at multiple places at the same time. And needing to, you know, respond to emails, respond to messages, and just a lot of interaction between you and other people. And I feel the interaction might be at a distance, like um, through, you know, text messages, te um, phone calls, and things like that. But either way, it's a very fast-moving type of a kinetic energy coming through for this week. So with the Page of Coins, I pulled out three cards to clarify. What I'm feeling is um, there is somebody in your home environment, okay? And I feel like they have always been kind of um, the outsider looking in, okay? Looking in and reassessing what you're doing, assessing, you know, how you're managing things, looking at your, the way that you do things. So it's somebody who has always been uh, on the outskirts. You might be estranged from this person. Um, you are a little bit, I feel, for some of you, frustrated with them because you feel like they're not really taking initiative to do things. And you feel almost like, I, I see a, a sense of like criticism coming in between you and them. So I don't know if it's from their end to you or from your end to them. It could be mutual where, you know, um, earth and water, they might not like certain things that you're doing. They might not like your parenting style. You might not like certain things they're doing. You might not like their parenting style. You might not like the way that they just, you know, uh, do things around the house. Cooking, for example, taking care of things, cleaning, whatever it is. It's a home situation. And I feel like if this is somebody that you've been kind of estranged from because of your ideological differences, there's going to be communication. I see them asking you possibly, can you babysit the kids? Can you uh, help me run this errand? I have to stay home with the kids. They're sick. Can you help me do this? Can you help me do that? And I feel like it's going to create like a little bit of a bridge to mend the relationship between you and this person. Um, I also feel as well financial assistance coming through for those who are in need. So like there's a huge chunk of change exchange between you and this person. And I feel for many of you, it's from them coming to you. Okay, so money from them coming to your bank account or uh, some type of um, assistance from their end to your end that will really, you know, help bridge the gap between your relationship. If it's a family member, you know, take it with a grain of salt, okay? Karmic relationships come out in family member relationships, interaction as well. And so um, if you've been, I see for some of you, you in the past, you might have, you know, needed their approval. I see a judgmental energy about them. If in the past you've done things and you felt like, oh, I needed their approval to do this, to buy this, to, you know, fix this for the house, um, you're no longer under their thumb, so you're no longer seeking approval from them. So even though they might not like something that you're doing, they're also realizing that you're becoming more independent, so they're not going to voice their discontent or their dissatisfaction, which is good, I feel. The next card here is the Eight of Wands, and the Eight of Wands indicates... A lot of fast movement, travel, swift communication through, you know, um, electronic means. So this is like emails, text messages, phone calls, and uh, just a lot of things happening for you to move situations along. Um, it's in your love sector. So what I have is I feel like there's an outpouring of emotions coming towards you. I feel like for some of you, um, you have beat a dead horse for too long. You were, were waiting on or, you know, wanting things to spark up or start up with a specific person in your life. And I feel like 
you're no longer putting your life on hold. You're no longer waiting around for them to change their mind and to communicate with you how they feel. They might have been very closed off. They might have been assessing you and uh, the way that you are and the way that they are. They might not have felt like, I'm hearing, you know, we're not very compatible. How is this going to work? Do I want to take the risk? So I feel like they're very risk adverse and they might not have felt like, you know, there was enough compatibility or commonalities between you and them to move things forward. But what I feel happening is there is some type of a revelation coming through for this week that will allow you to realize how much they do care about you. So they might not have expressed it in the past, but they're expressing it now in the hopes that you might stay. So I feel like your packing up your bags, ready to move on. And then they do this massive, you know, emotional opening up. And I feel like it's going to make you very, very, very pleased and very happy because all along your intuition was telling you, this person is conflicted about me, but they do feel for me. And over time, when you're stuck in that uh, situation where you feel something differently, but then the reality is not showing you what you feel, you, you felt as if you couldn't trust your intuition. And I got this message for Aquarius a few weeks back. So it's like the, the physical reality is not matching up to your intuition. And you doubted your intuition. You doubted your sense of um, you know, reality. And so this is the week where, you know, there is an outpouring of love that will allow you to see how this person really truly feels about you. And I feel for some of you, you've already tried to move on from it and now you're revisiting it. And then some of you, um, there's just communication coming from another person because they don't want you to leave. Okay. So either way, I feel like it's very beautiful. The next card is the Two of Wands. And the Two of Wands is sort of like scanning the horizon, looking for our new opportunities, um, trying to see you know, our place in the world, trying to implement whatever we learn and apply it into the practical environment. So um, it, it's, it's, a, it's more like putting theory to practice. Okay, whatever you know, whatever you've spent a lot of time reading up on or learning about, you're now able to exercise or you know take what you learn and apply it to real life problems so it's a major major learning process um, I feel like this is in relations to you know reassessing some of your significant relationships and especially in the work front I feel like some of you have emerged from some type of a, a learning environment and you're trying to apply what you learn into work um, I feel like, you know, those um, big email chains going around where it's like um, information filter from the top down and they're telling you, here's the new guidelines, here's the new policy, here's the new procedure. And so I feel like it happens frequently wherever you work. There's a lot of uh, changes happening in your work environment. And then every month or every week you get these new emails and you're like, oh, no, they're changing the procedure. So I have to relearn. And so I see a lot of that coming in. I'm also seeing as well um, the message about, you know, keeping things close to your chest. There are some elements, some people in your work environment that are a little bit cutthroat. They're not completely diplomatic. They're a little bit more on the self-serving end. And then I also feel like there is a little bit of conflict brewing with coworkers, with people around you. And I feel like there's there's one person in particular who is very, very harsh with their words. They might say things that are uh, divisive. They might purposely, they might purposely be very um, uh, what like unpolitically correct just to stir things up. They want to emphasize how independent of a thinker they are. And as a result, they might not be sensitive to people's, um, they, they might not, you know, they, they might like um, try to rock the boat. Their energy is, I feel harmless. It's not anything detrimental to your standing or your work per se. I just feel like it's bubbling and brewing around you. And it can be a, like a, an annoyance. It's like swatting away a fly or swatting away a mosquito. It's annoying, but it doesn't really do any damage to you. 
So I feel there's that element here as well about, you know, being a little bit like, um, you know, keep your, keep your, keep a low profile, keep your ideas and your plans and your opinions kind of to yourself and uh, ignore whatever is happening around you. Don't take sides. Don't get embroiled in office politics. Don't get destabilized as a result of somebody else's energy. Okay, Pisces, don't get involved with, you know, gossip and rumors and, and things like that. Um, the next card I have here is the chariot and the chariot is greatly about success. It's about harnessing the disparate energies within us so that we can move ahead with purpose, drive, and determination. This is a card about pushing through, okay? Whatever obstacles has been standing in your way, I feel like many of you are just determined to push through. And you're going to be able to achieve a lot of success as a result of it. The way this energy is playing out in your life, I feel like it has a lot to do with your financial situation. I see many of you have been, you know, stacking up the, um, the money, stacking up the coins. So saving for some type of a trip, saving for some type of a major move, just saving for retirement, I'm seeing, saving for a rainy day. So I see many of you just stacking it up, okay, being very disciplined with what you're buying, how much you're spending, um, being a little bit hard on yourself even when it comes to, you know, not splurging on big ticket items. Um, so I feel like many of you have been very disciplined when it comes to your financial resources. You don't live um, outside of your means. Um, I see as well, there is a huge element about saving for children. So some of you might be anticipating, you know, having children or even your children are growing and you're trying to put them into, you know, a good college, even a good high school, a good private school. And so you're kind of nickel and diming yourself and you have been. And I feel like, you know, the bank account is really, really booming. Like there's a lot of financial resources that you've built up. Um, I see some of you are on wait lists as well for child care, for um, like a private school or for like a university. Um, you yourself could be for a university. And I see some of you. And I see some of you really saving up mainly for a car like buying a vehicle or, and, and honestly, I'm, I'm sensing that you kind of need to save up. If you have been having car issues, you might need to really save up and skimp out on, you know, splurging so that you can get some part, some car parts or buying some car parts or getting some parts of the car fixed. So this energy in general indicates to me the need to save up, the need to be more disciplined with yourself for those who are kind of off track financially so that you can, you know, um, mitigate the impact of this if it comes into the picture. I see some of you as well um, choosing between, you know, different mode of transportation. Maybe some people are getting like a motorcycle and then others are getting a car. You're trying to decide between the two motorcycles or trying to decide between two cars. But there's a need here to save up money, okay? Save up for a rainy day as it relates to some type of vehicle or some type of mode of transportation. The next card coming into the picture here is the Nine of Swords. The way that this uh, card is depicted in this deck, I feel like accusations, okay? Uh, being a little bit paranoid about something, uh, getting yelled at by somebody, or getting some type of communication from another person that might seem a little bit harsh and un unwarranted. And what is coming through here is I see a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. This is somebody that I'm sensing there has been a lot of confusion between you and this person. There has been a lot of like um, an exchange of mixed messages. And I feel like at one point there, there is a, has been a very soulful connection. You know, this might have been somebody you've dated a few times. You might have had an attraction for them. And um, I feel like somewhere along the way, things kind of got a little bit chaotic. And then things might have gotten a little bit awkward. So it's not, it, it's almost like they don't really know how they feel about you. You don't really know where you stand with them. You know how you feel about them. But there has been some type of an awkward energy, I feel, getting in the way. Like jokes getting out of control or situations getting out of control. And then there's now some type of lingering awkwardness between you and this person. Um, 
what I'm feeling is this person is very impatient. They might not have felt like, so they felt like they were pursuing you and that you should have known how they felt about you. You felt like they should have come forward and become more consistent with you. And so there is definitely some type of misunderstanding that has happened between the two of you. And it might have led to, you know, um, some type of a love-hate relationship. Some type of a situation where one person felt like the other person would, was withdrawing. And then, so then in, in retaliation, the other person withdrew. So it's a very cat and mouse, you know, uh, mirroring type of energy. And um, I feel like this person um, might have guilt tripped you. They might have pressured you into doing something that you don't like. Um, pressuring you to speed up the relationship. Pressuring you possibly to sleep with them. Pressuring you to do things that you just weren't ready for. If this is the case you know, uh, move away from it, okay, because their energy is not entirely healthy. I also feel like you you might be getting co uh, conversation, communication from this person. They want to apologize. They, they realize that, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting a hit on this. They want to apologize to you, but you know, their pride won't let them simply say, I'm sorry. So they're going to approach you in a very roundabout way, possibly aggravate you, okay? If the communication is coming in, let them do the talking, okay? Let them ask the questions, let them do the talking, let them direct the conversation. So you know how some people, they, you haven't talked to them in a few months, and then they come in and they're like, hey, what's going on? And... They're trying to test the waters with you. They're trying to test where you're at. So the best thing to do is just, um, you know, answer in a very curt, in a very direct way. And if they want something from you, they need to be grown up about it and to initiate that conversation with you. Okay? Otherwise, just leave it alone. So I see a fire sign coming into the picture. Somebody that um, you've had some type of a situation, like romantic situation with, and things have gotten awkward over time. Uh, so that's going to be coming through. Okay? Pisces, I hope the reading is helpful for you, and I wish you the best for this week. Okay? Take care.